now that, that brings me up to like the test patterns. We had several kinds of test patterns. We have several kinds of test patterns. The SMPTE bars, which is still used in both HD and SD, which allows us to, you know, align our colors and our video levels. And you can still look at a waveform monitor and get your levels set correctly. And so you put adjust uh, using a chip chart, which is black levels, you know, and you can adjust, align your camera using a chip chart to get the brightness set correctly. And a chip chart's also real good for setting your color balance. You can use a gray uh, chart to set your color balance, you know, the white balance on your, on your camera, or you can use a chip chart to set your white balance. Now, originally the differences in cameras uh, between nowadays, we, we use a lot of uh, DSLRs, we use a lot of cinematic cameras. Broadcast cameras are usually designed to stay in focus through the entire range of their zoom range. And cinematic cameras have a situation where you're looking at the focus plane and it can be out of focus where it's close to you. It can be in focus at a certain distance and they can be out of focus further down the focus plane and that is a cinematic camera now in broadcast cameras we would i've got an example here of an old style broadcast camera this is an old panasonic and you'll notice it looks a lot different from the cameras that you'd use today in many ways one thing about it is it has a relatively small pickup area so I can get this disconnected. It's got a pickup in it that's relatively tiny. I don't know if you can see this, and I, but if I look into it, it's about maybe I would say a lot less than a half an inch, than a quarter inch in size. This particular pickup on this camera, and even though it has a really uh, superior lens on it, the pickup is small now. Why did they have small pickups on broadcast camera? This camera has a really small imager. It's uh, less than, um, oh, I'd say it's around, it's less than a quarter inch, actually. And so it's a small imager, and so it has a relatively large lens. But the thing is, it's, it's designed, this is designed to actually be in focus the entire zoom range. This camera would uh, have a zoom, this is a zoom control right here on the camera. And you could zoom all the way in on somebody and all the way out to a wide shot. And they had a, an adjustment on it right here called a back focus adjustment. And you'd use a back focus uh, chart and you would adjust this camera so that you could zoom all the way in on somebody or a very small object and it would be in focus and then you could zoom all the way out and you'd still be in focus because this uh, is a typical broadcast camera that's been around for years and the, the objective of this camera is to have a great picture all the time and everything everywhere is always in focus and uh, so you could adjust uh, this camera and, just, and once you got it set you just zoom in and zoom out and no matter where you are it looks good and that is basically a broadcast camera. Uh, it has a lot of settings on it. You have filters you can put on and so forth. But uh, the function of this camera is to make a pretty picture all the time. This camera is a DSLR. And it, it can be more like a cinema camera. It has a very large imager in it. And because of the large imager and the lenses you can put on it, you can actually set up this camera where varying portions of the shot are going to be in or out of focus. And so a lot of people that shoot cinema or cinematography, they don't want a broadcast camera because it's always in focus. They want to be able to use the effect of limited depth of field. This camera then will allow us to actually have uh, our subject in focus while everything behind the subject is out of focus and everything in front of the subject is out of focus. And so that's sort of a touching on the difference between cinema and the difference between broadcast cameras. And we're going to cover that in great depth in a little bit.